they, you know, conduct themselves. Okay, so when police go to a demonstration scene, you know, their response will be based on a crowd analysis that they do. And I, I don't I don't know, as I've said over the period, because of the way the police have reacted to a lot of demonstrations in the country. Kumi Preko, yes, it, the, it, the yes, it, it suggests that. to me that they don't really do a lot of crowd behavior analysis when they go to a crime scene. They only just go to quell whatever they think is there. You know, yes, but basically the response should be based on this analysis, as I've said. Okay, so once you see that the mood of, of the crowd is changing, you begin, you start from the lowest level of, you know, you know, control or response. You know, so sometimes you use what we call the bullhorn or the megaphone. Okay, just to warn them and tell, them, look, you guys need to disperse. You guys need to change your route. You guys need to follow this route. You you guys need to do this, do this. So normally that's what is done. You have to issue those kind of orders and instructions to to the protesters or the demonstrators as a fair sign. Normally it's it's supposed to be done maybe three or four times, and it is when these people de decide to defy. That is when normally you see the police forming what we call the tactical formation. So I saw that uh, on, with the protesters, I mean, on Tuesday, where you see the police form a very thick line, uh, very impenetrable, mm -hmm. and the people were pushing against that. So most of the time, if the police feel that, look, these guys are so recalcitrant and they are pushing, that is when they deploy their batons, okay, where they hit and then they push, they hit and then push as a way to disperse them. And now it becomes problematic. David, when you have protesters carrying weapons or what, what we call deadly weapons. Like we, we had one of the leaders of the NDC, you know, yes. had his uh, uh, side arm with him yes. and was told to leave it in the car and all that. Exactly. Mm. I mean, it becomes, it becomes problematic for the police because, you see, the police is there to protect lives and property. But first, they must also protect themselves. They must make sure that they reduce a lot of casualties on their side. Mm. So once they see that the demonstration scene carries with it a lot of deadly weapons, which can injure people and also them, it means that they have to act. And I heard some people saying somewhere that, oh, but you see, the demonstrators were not apt. You know, all that they were having is just stones. My friend, look, if, if you are talking about deadly weapons, in the operations of the police, stones constitute deadly weapons. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about deadly weapons, we are looking at anything that can be used to cause bodily harm or injury or death. As we saw some of police officers. With exactly. With so you could see that there were a lot of casualties on the side of the police because people were using stones and rocks against them. So when you do that, the police are not going to sit down and look, and look at you and watch you do that. They are going to react. And then when they react, if you are not careful and they have a lot of lethal weapons at their disposal and, and good sense and common sense and humanity doesn't come in, they are going to deploy those projectiles. Especially when they see one of their own, two exactly. of them with injuries. Uh, with a lot of blood injuries and, you know, the person have to some way, somehow rescued from the scene, you know, into an ambulance or even to the hospital. It, they, they get very agitated. And if you are not lucky, they will deploy these non-lethal weapons. That's why I commended the police. Because in the face of the kind of, you know, provocation that we saw on Tuesday from the protesters, whether those guys were infiltrators from the police or even from the from the protesters themselves, you could see that the provocation was quite serious. But the police some way, somehow stood their ground as, as opposed to what I've always known them to be and mm. the kind of analysis I've done over the period in mm. police response. They stood on their feet, you know, make sure that at least they minimize the kind of casualties that ordinarily. So to you, the police did better on Tuesday. I think they did. They did better on Tuesday. Yes, I'll give them a pass mark of about seventy percent for for Tuesday. Yes, for Tuesday.